So, I have a house. Specifically, I have Grandma's house. This is a um, N-scale model kit that I found of Grandma's house by Model Power. I know in the last video I said I was going to up the scale to uh, HO, but uh, HO is a bit bigger than I thought. It's uh, some way, someone thankfully reminded me it's uh, 187, and I started looking at the sizes of uh, HO kits, and um, uh, they were going to be too big, unfortunately. So I had a rethink. I started looking at the end scale kits again, and um, the mistake I made was the Japanese houses that I had from Green Max. Um, well, they're based on Japanese houses, and those are very, very tiny. So, um, American house in the same scale is much, much bigger. So this is like the equivalent of three of those Green Max houses. But it's all built, and it looks like something you would see uh, in the countryside somewhere. I don't think it's a match for the one in the movie. I wasn't even trying to match that one. I just wanted something that would look appropriate. And this looks a little old-fashioned. And what I have here, I have it on a piece of balsa foam to raise it up a bit, which makes it appear a little bit bigger as well. And now uh, I'm going to put on... Oh, one second here. Put that off to the side for the moment. I have some uh, Das Pronto modeling clay. And I probably could have used something else, but um, this is a bit old school. I've used this before, and I knew this would work for what I needed. Um, what I need it for is to fit, uh, fill in all the area around here and to work up some uh, rough terrain. And I have magnets attached to my magnets on the feet. So once I spread this out, I'm going to press the tripod in wherever I need it and um, that will put indentations into the clay um, and then later I can go and glue the magnets in place. So first step is to take a big honking chunk of our Das Pronto. I don't know what makes this different from regular clay. I think there's paper in it or something. I'm going to take a big chunk. I got some white glue here. <clears throat> Put a. Oh, you always clog when I'm on camera. Put a very large dollop of it in the clay. And then mix this up. And this will make the clay sticky and so it will stick better to the base and having gloves would not be a bad idea right now so I'm just going to make this, mix this up real quick so now I'm just applying the clay trying to build up um, <clears throat> to my base here uh, this is balsa foam in case I forgot to mention that and I'm using that as the base of the house just to raise the uh, the height of the house a little bit so it looks a little bit bigger. And I did coat, very important, I did coat the, uh, the pine base with some wood prep so it will not warp. That's very important. And so now I'm just going to be building this up. Gonna, I have no exact plan of what I'm doing. <clears throat> Just building it up to the point where uh, I'm happy with it. Probably need a little bit more glue in this. It would stick better if I had more glue. So I'm going to spread this out. And then um, push the tripod feet into the base. And then once that's done, I can cover this with some sort of uh, gravel material. And then a few other things to add, and then I could start with the painting. 
and the big question right now is how I turn the camera off without getting glue all over it. So there is our Das Pronto clay all laid out. Probably should have done it in two layers. Uh, ended up being a bit thicker than I originally was planning on. Uh, I did uh, take a pin and poke a bunch of holes in it and that will help it dry quicker. So hopefully in 24 hours I can continue on this. But now I need to put the tripod in place. So we can do this in one shot. Get exactly where I want it. Let's put it something like this. And I can tell right now I goofed up a little bit. Uh, since it's at a slant, my feet are not sitting properly. I need to add a bit more clay in the back there. But I'll just keep going here to show you. Luckily, because these uh, legs are so uh, wobbly, I can bend them slightly to conform to the base. But there, at least, I got, except for the back, got my imprints. You can see them there, there, and there. So I know where I need to uh, drill eventually to add the magnets. So let me add a bit more putty in the back and uh, see in 24 hours. So here's the base. It is almost entirely dry and the pine base did not warp anymore. Good. That's because I uh, coated it first. And um, I got a little bit of cracking here. Separation and where I added extra putty. Uh, it split up a bit, no big deal. I can just fill that in with some uh, stucco. Um, so this is going to get graveled somehow. And then I got to work it up with some more details. Two things I need. Uh, I need some trees and I need some of the red vines that are growing everywhere. And I made my yearly trip to Walmart because I really hate going in there. And I got two things. Some scotch right pads. And this is the stuff, if you buy like, um, I think Army Painter has a, a vine set. This is what actually uh, you get for the, for the vines. Uh, usually get them in green though, but the blue here is going to work better for my needs. And you just pull it off, you get a nice little uh, viney looking, if we get close enough. There we go. Little viney looking thing. So I'm going to uh, paint this up, we'll probably rip off some chunks first, and then paint it red, and this is going to get carefully applied all over. I think that will work well. And then I need a couple trees, and I was going to take some um, just wire and bend it up and then glue some extra branches to it, but next to the scotch ray pads, I found this thing, it's a root scrubber, I guess because it's made actually from roots. But uh, it has a nice little wavy pattern to it, so I'm going to take this apart and glue a bunch of the uh, little roots together and make trees. So that should work quite well.